So how good can the world's cheapest f1.4 full frame lens actually be? And I will have to say that my expectations for this lens were pretty low when it was sent out to me. And I think with anything in life, often that is sort of the key to being happy is to have low expectations. So I would say a bare minimum, the lens has exceeded my expectations. And although it's not a perfect lens, it is good at a number of things. And I think there's a number of people out there that this lens really might suit. And the first thing I should mention is this lens is available on four different mounts, basically all the major full frame mirrorless mounts, and that's Sony, Canon, Nikon, and L mount. So if you shoot in any of those camera series, you're going to be able to put this lens on your camera. The first key feature about the lens and the thing that just jumps out to you the most is absolutely the price. Now, when they were releasing this lens, it sounded like the price was going to be around $200. The price has now come out and it's close to half of that. I don't know what the price will do in the future and whether this is just a launch day sale or if they just change their mind as far as the marketing strategy goes. But without question, I spent about an hour researching and I could not find a cheaper f1.4 full frame lens. So if you are looking for blurry background and low light photo and video, this is the cheapest lens that is going to achieve those results with its f1.4 maximum aperture. And in use, probably the first thing that I really noticed about the image quality of the lens was not the sharpness and detail, it was really that background blur. Lenses like this tend to be very simple in their optical design. They tend to have less elements, they tend to have less corrective elements, and the result of that is they aren't always the most sharpest and detailed images for pixel peepers, but they do often give a much better blurry background, a much more creamy, smooth backdrop to the image that you're looking at. They often have really good roll off from the in focus area to the out of focus area. That transition can be very smooth and not jagged and distracting. Now, I think it's common nowadays that everybody is obsessed with sharpness and detail, sharpness and detail. How sharp is it? How sharp is it? Every time a new lens comes out, how sharp is it? But not as many people look at the background blur. And I actually think in most cases, the background blur, quality of that background blur is actually more important than the sharpness. And the reason for that is when you're actually taking a photo, whether it be a portrait or you've got a subject in the middle of frame and you're creating a blurry background, in most cases, the amount of the photo that's actually in focus it can be as little as sort of 15 to even up to 25% at the most. Oftentimes, 75, 85, even 90% of your photo is out of focus. So if you have a very sharp and detailed image of that subject in the center of frame or wherever you put it in the frame, and then you've got this horrible, busy, distracting background blur, it actually means that most of your photo isn't very good. <laughs> the only part of the photo that's in focus that is good is that like sort of 20%, 15% of the photo is good. The other 80% doesn't look very good. So. I think we really need to at least balance the way the background blur looks compared to that sharpness and detail. And this lens definitely favors a higher quality background blur at the sacrifice of that sharpness and detail. Now, the other thing this lens does well is capture low light photo and video. And that's because it has an f1.4 maximum aperture, which is how big the opening is in the back of the lens that allows the light to come through. And at this price point, I don't know any other full frame lens that goes to f1.4. And f1.4 between one lens and another lens are virtually the same. They let the same amount of light in. So you can go out and find a thousand dollar f1.4 aperture lens. And that lens is actually going to be letting in the exact same amount of light as this cheap little lens. So from a low light perspective, this lens should perform just as well as any other f1.4 lens on the market, regardless of what price it's at. And the first thing you think when you hear of a cheap lens is you think of a cheap build quality. And I can promise you with this lens, that is absolutely not the case. You have got an all metal lens, you have got a polished metal lens mount, this thing is quite heavy and it is just really, really well finished. It feels like a very, very premium product and it does not feel like a budget lens at all. 
It also is quite small. Even though it's heavy for its size, it is quite small, which when you put it on a full frame camera, it makes a perfect sort of discreet street photography lens or just sort of going around at night or at a birthday party or at sort of an event or a function. You've got that f1.4 maximum aperture, but you've got it in a very, very small package, which is going to be less intimidating to your subjects. And if you're shooting on the street, it's just going to be a little less conspicuous and not so obvious to the people around you that you're shooting. So the build quality on this is first class. I've got no qualms about that. And I also like the size. It is a great little size. And the couple of places I think in photography that this lens really excels at is one is for portrait photography, probably anywhere from sort of head to waist, head and shoulders down to full body shot. I think with the 35 millimeters on a full frame camera, if you get too close, it will distort the facial features because 35 millimeters on full frame is reasonably wide. So I probably wouldn't want to go any closer than sort of mid torso to the top of the head and maybe ideally sort of from waist to head. Also great for environmental portraits where you're going to get a full body and take the whole scene in and you're going to be able to capture a person and what they're doing or take a photo of them and get a good amount of the surrounding environment in to sort of show the context of where they are. So those are two great sort of portrait uses for this lens. The other place I think it's great is as a street photography lens. One, because I said earlier, because it's so small, but two, because on the side of the lens, it actually has your apertures, your different aperture values, and it also shows you the range that you've got that is roughly in focus. So if you set that to f8, you set it to a certain distance, it tells you sort of one meter or three feet. It will then show you, hey, if you set it to this, anything from say infinity to you know 30 centimeters is in focus, for example, what have you. So it actually shows you the range of the distance from the lens or from the sensor that's actually going to be in focus, which can be super, super useful for street photography because I generally do most of my street photography with a manual lens, and this is the way that I use my manual lenses. I use what they call zone focus. I know that I'm going to be taking a picture of somebody that's, say, one or two meters away. I set the focus to that. And then when I approach those subjects, I just make sure that they're in that area in focus before I snap my photo and I get something that's roughly in focus. The other thing is with street photography, I shoot at f5.6 to f8. That means that most of the time, there's not a whole lot of blurry background, maybe a little bit, but really the focus of the image is capturing a nice detailed subject, but having that background in focus at least to an extent where you can see the context of the subject and the city that they're in. If you just blur out the background, then they could be in any city anywhere. So I actually stop that aperture down so that that background is more in focus. And because of that, when you stop this lens down to f5.6 or f8, it actually becomes quite sharp and is similar to a modern autofocus lens as far as the level of detail that it resolves, particularly in the center of frame, which is often where my subjects are in sort of street photography uses. Now, why wouldn't you buy this lens? It's so cheap. Why wouldn't you buy it? Well, I think a lot of people just are afraid of manual focus, manual aperture. Now, I am a big fan of manual focus, manual aperture. And as I said, I shoot street photography almost exclusively with manual focus, manual aperture. So I do prefer that. But I know a lot of people just don't want to think about it. They just, it's not a part of the photography, a complication that they want to add. I want to say if you haven't shot manual focus, manual aperture, I would encourage you to try it, particularly with a cheap lens like this. It just gives you a chance to to experience this, and I find it makes me more in touch with the photos and videos that I'm capturing. Just having that extra element of control and responsibility, I just find that I get better photos in general. But I know that's not for everybody, so that's the first person that might consider not buying this lens. The other group of people, which are a huge group of people out there, are pixel peepers. As I said, this lens gets you a really nice creamy blurry background because of the simple optical design, but it doesn't give you the level of sharpness and detail that you're going to get out of most modern mirrorless lenses nowadays. In fact, I would say it performs very similarly to a vintage lens. Now, this does appear to have a multi-coating on it where sort of old vintage lenses don't have a multi-coating, which makes those images a bit more washed out and they kind of don't have the same level of contrast. 
This lens has very, very good contrast. So I believe, well, in fact, it says right on the lens, multi-coated, should have read that. So it is a multi-coated optic. So it does give you very good contrast, but it doesn't give you that minute sharpness and detail at f1.4 wide open. Once you stop it down to f5.6, f8, you do get there. But for somebody that's gonna shoot at f1.4 and it's gonna wanna zoom into 120% and see every tiny eyelash, then this probably isn't the lens for you. Now for me, buying new lenses for interchangeable lens cameras is one of the biggest ways to improve and change your photography and change the way that you're viewing the world through your camera. But if you want to get better at photography without spending any money, I've just thrown a video on screen now. This is the best video or tutorial I have ever done on photography. And I think there's some concepts in there that if you understand them, you will definitely be a better photographer at the end of that video than you are right now.